Well, when we left this last time, we had torn apart our John Deere 5200 and split it in half, and well, now we're going to put it back together again, so come along for the ride. So we got the new clutch installed. Customer opted to go with the new clutch. Uh, we got the linkage installed and working. If you can see, now the moves freely without trying to move the PTO clutch. And if we move the PTO clutch, that works as well. All right, so we got her bagged up for the night. We got a new clutch. And we got our adjusted linkage and greased linkage and everything ready to go. Uh, we got to do the setup for actually bringing this thing back together. Um, instead of that railroad jack, I want to be able to adjust this because I think it's a little bit high right now. When we took it out, it kind of it's it's just a just a tad off, and I want it to be perfect when I bring it in. So we're gonna take that railroad jack out and we're gonna put a normal floor jack in, and then we can lower this down a little bit. But we're not going to do that until we actually have everything set up to bring it together. So, until that happens, we're going to button this up. So, before we can snip this back together again, I want to put the PTO shaft cover back in and on. Because then I can just easy turn the PTO shaft to get it aligned with the clutch splines. So... That's what we're going to do. We got this nice temporary clear cover on here. Uh, we've had it buttoned up nice here and we're going to put all this back together. This is the temporary PTO housing cover that was made for me by my wonderful, lovely, beautiful assistant. And well, it's pretty slick, you know, for a temporary seal you know you want to put on there it's just if you have plastic lying around it works great and it's pretty much waterproof if you tape it you know for the most part so you're not going to submerge it in water so it keeps the dust out and everything else and dirt and yeah it's good you know, we'll hang on to that in case we ever do one of these again nope never doing one again the customer did successfully press the pump off the pto shaft and returned the parts to us so I think there's a, or should be a seal in the cover that we got to replace, and we'll uh, make sure everything's cleaned and oiled and snip her back in there. Got a new gasket. Uh, we should have everything we need. But a gasket they missed there. If you're ever looking for a good gasket scraper, uh, this is a hardened tooling head. I think it's off of uh, some piece of industrial equipment. But they work good for gasket scrapers because they have a hardened edge and you know they're perfectly straight. All right, Not for our purposes, let's get this old seal out of here. Got a new one of them somewhere. The thing about these tooling heads is you have this flat surface, but you also have the edges. So if you have a situation like this, you can easy clean up inside things like that with the edge. Did check all the bearings and everything on the shafts they brought back. Uh, this one is the only one that might be a little bit just a teensy bit suspect it's just you can just feel a little hair of grinding but 
the others are very very perfectly silky smooth and of course this is the rear one on the actual pto shaft right near the exit so that takes the most weight and force they didn't they didn't make a note about it or say anything about it that they feel that it's an issue so i'm not going to worry about it it's not like we have to split the whole tractor in half to fix that if it ever comes to that they don't seem to feel it's an issue i suppose brand new genuine John Deere gasket now along with my philosophy of never putting in a dry seal we're gonna put some vaseline on there It'll just seat along the edge. Get it right there. So now, so I don't forget, put a little bit of Vaseline on the seal. Make sure it's lubricated. You don't want to rip it putting it in. And Vaseline is a good assembly lube. It dissolves in petroleum products because it's just petroleum jelly, so it will not overly contaminate your oil. The seal fits right on here on the shaft. So you want to make sure you don't have any ridges or indentations or abnormalities that will affect the old seal. And I can feel a little bit in the shaft there. I don't know if it's build up. I don't know if it's a build-up or a pitting. I think it's a build-up. Now if you go to shove that through your new seal, there's a risk that something might happen with that. I'm gonna clean it up with some steel wool here. That's good. No marks in the steel. And if you're using steel wool, make sure you don't lose any pieces of metal. Because remember, this is going back inside your transmission. I'm just gonna put a little more Vaseline on here just to make sure we don't rip that seal. Good, so now gasket is on. We're going to we're gonna put it on right side up, I think. You know, doing stuff the right way. So at this point, we're good. Just gotta make sure these angles are very Precise, obviously, because the bearings go into a square bore, well, rectangular. Oh, okay. Okay. Make sure your dowels are aligned as you do this. All right. Well, she's finding the torque wrench. We'll get these bolts going here. Third little screwdriver. Just right. So the tor torque spec for this is 65 foot pounds, so the manual says. I'm gonna get them all snug because I don't want to just torque one down and bend anything or throw anything out of alignment. Good idea to tighten them in steps. I'm gonna do one final torque, but 65 foot pounds is a good bit for this little ratchet I'm using. It'd be hard to get a lot of torque on it, so basically I'm going to snug them in a couple steps. Okay, now we're going to get the torque wrench. We're going to go too much further here. Yep. PTO shaft spins. 
PTO cover is in. It's good, it turns, everything is verified good. These two bolts here, I had to take this thingy, I had to take this thingy off. That's the technical term we're using, this bracket, this thingy. I had to take it off to get to the cover, so put that back on so we don't forget. And we'll be completely yeah. done, hopefully, with the back of the tractor. We do still have to fill this with fluid, but uh, we have some filters to change, and I'm going to fill the fluids all at once. Got a filter kit for this thing, which I shudder to think how much that cost, but there's just a thousand filters on these tractors. And if you watch the video on the Belarus tractor versus this tractor, uh, well, the videos, You'll know that the, the Belarus has very few filters and works just fine and it has a couple cleanable filters which are nice whereas this thing for you know an added note for that video for tractor comparison and the associated issues this thing has like eight filters on it so you know that adds to the cost when you go to service and maintenance these things for, also for comparison's sake the quantity of fluids used in this tractor that is made to do the same amount of work as svetlana over here the fluids is horrifically more this transmission you fill up to like here with uh, gear oil tractor hydraulic fluid and it's just absolutely insane it holds an awful lot of gear oil i mean it takes like 10 gallons or i don't remember exactly what it is but it's something ridiculous. It's a ridiculous amount. This thing, the transmission takes, uh, you know, like two and a half gallons, which is a lot cheaper. And this thing is just cheaper to run and cheaper to maintain. So that's just a corollary to that video if you're doing a comparison. But, you know. Oh, and filters cost more because they're John Deere. All right. Now we can do a little bit more prep to put this thing together. Now we can turn the PTO shaft to align it when we put this thing together. Um, you have to block the rear wheels here. I blocked the front before when I was pulling it apart. We don't want it coming backwards when we're pulling. <clears throat> what we're going to do here is we're good. we got the winch on Svetlana here because we don't have a lot of room here because I didn't think too far ahead and can't get the truck back here. So uh, we're going to put the winch underneath and we're going to pull the front backwards just gently i'm gonna have somebody back here running the winch and i'm gonna be up here or i don't know you know the cord's probably long enough but you know it's very handy you can sit up here and zzz, 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 you know and make sure everything's lining up as you're going and make sure everything's level so we're gonna do some prep work here and then the next running phase of this operation will be to snip this back together again so what we got here is I'm going to put this thing back together. We got Svetlana with the winch hooked up to the front. And we're just going to snip it back this way. Um, we still have to do the alignment here. We got the, we took the railroad jack out because that was a good support to long term. But temporarily we can lower a little bit, get these shafts aligned. So that's the first step. Still up a little bit high. I'm gonna go down just a fraction. Good? Yeah. Oh, what are we... We're gonna need a new tripod. So we had a tripod casualty. <laughs> it's still stuck. Oh, kill more tripods that way. <laughs> $10, we're good. <laughs> 
have all the things we got to worry about right now. Now I know why pudding goes through so many tripods. <laughs> Give it a little bit of in. Keep it, keep it moving constantly back and forth. So we got the tractor back together, but we have tested both clutches are engaged. Both clutches seem to work. They're not adjusted yet. Uh, we're gonna do all the adjustments and, and free play and everything later. We're gonna tighten the bell housing bolts and basically, you know, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. So we're gonna pull all the stands and jacks out and tighten some bolts and then we'll start putting her back together again. All right, starting to get stuff back together again here. Uh, steering lines, everything connection wise is back together on this end. Uh, bolts are torqued, fuse blocks back in, this cover plates back on. Over here is a dog. Oh, hi, Winston. But you don't want to be in the camera. All right, fine. He's never been one for being a star. Uh, we got to put the plate back in here. Fuel filter, connect a few more lines. Got the steering down there, do the hydraulic lines. We'll have to bleed the fuel system, obviously, and refill fluids. I think we're going to do filters before we do all that because, you know, fuel system's bled down already anyway and dropped the oil and some other things. So we're getting there. Well, we got the hydraulics back together. Uh, we're draining the oil. Uh, somebody ordered the wrong filter kit for it, so we don't have new filters yet, but we got the plates for here and our plates and covers and over here on the bell housing. So we're gonna slap this on and this thing will be completely buttoned up except for fluids and filters and then we can put the gauge cluster back on it and well, once we have filters and then we can bleed the fuel system and fire it up again. So let's get these back on and see where we're at. Well, before putting her all back together here, we gave her a good pressure washing. Of course, with the battery disconnected, but uh, it's going to be a few days before we actually get to the electrical troubleshooting on this. So it'll have a good long time to dry off and we can see a little bit better what's going on because we're not buried in mud down here. If you saw part one, I kind of showed what it looked like. This thing was used, um, I think, to, as a dust broom basically for a long time. And all that dust is just packed into the console up here under the cowling panels and behind the gauge cluster. And so we gave her a good rinse down and That'll help us when we get to the electrical and hopefully we can see a little bit better what's going on. Got a new tripod. We're replacing filters and stuff here. Uh, we replaced the hydraulic filter, marked it with the hours and date, which it's a good idea to do all your filters, but yeah, uh, that's what we had to do to the filter to get it off because my goodness, strap wrenches and even running a screwdriver through the filler and trying to turn it as a lever didn't work. I mean, it was really on there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it was on there. Um, but new one's on now, so it's all good. Um, so we're going to do the oil filter, air filter, fuel filter. On a more serious note, when Eminem says, two trailer park girls go around the outside. What does he mean?
add like, you know, 500 gallons of hydraulic oil. This is the gauge cluster that uh, came off the John Deere that's going to need a little TLC to get to the electronics on the back. And uh, it just needs a good bath and get it clean. Here's the gauge cluster after it's been cleaned up a little bit. Definitely should be easier to read now. We got the fuel system all bled. She uh, she should start up now. Let's find out. All right, runs good. Uh, Let's do some let's do some testing on the clutches and just verify everything here. Yeah, so everything's working good. Everything's looking good. Uh, clutch pedal feels great, just like it should, and the engagement feels absolutely perfect. Uh, gears work now. The PTO shaft, um, it's spinning right now, but, well, so just an idle here, just running around. The PTO shaft is spinning without the PTO clutch engaged. Um, but there shouldn't be any power to it. Yeah, see, I can stop it with my hand. So, <clears throat> this doesn't actually have a real PTO brake. Uh, I checked in the manual and everything before when I was looking at it. Just, it has like a snubber with a bolt in there, which I did not adjust because, well, I couldn't test it before, really with the clutches the way they were so I didn't know what was gonna happen so to adjust that snubber you got to take it all apart again I guess or take something apart which I'm not gonna worry too much about uh, so if I go engage the PTO clutch uh, you should see that spin there just to demonstrate this I'm gonna go engage the PTO, the PTO clutch There you can see it's spinning and it does have I can't I can't stop it with my hand so you know that it's actually engaged and it's not just centrifugal force spinning that thing around like but if I go disengage it it'll it should probably still keep spinning because that snubber brake isn't fully adjusted. Now it is disengaged again and well yeah, see, I can I can stop it again. It's just because it's a separate clutch. It's spinning there with centrifugal force inside the giant bell housing clutch pack, and 
it wants to just wind the clutch over because it's you know inside of all that mass and and you know it, there's not much clearance between the clutch and the pressure plates so just a little bit can get that spinning over like that and uh, kind of wants to keep spinning after engagement so yeah um, everything's looking good fluids are looking good no leaks or anything after we change the filters um, yeah so I think we're ready to drive her around and do some testing here that's uh, a little drive demonstration on this thing I noticed the glow plug light well it doesn't have glow plugs it has a manifold heater but it never goes off when you keep the key in the run position so I don't know how you're supposed to use that you know just I don't know we're on a timer anywho get her out of this does have a park position over here for you know when you're parked there's first and over here we'll go to second so oh yeah she she runs great you like the position of the foot pedal throttle it's very nicely placed steering works good like about this shifter is the gates are so close together and they don't have any gate dividers here so when two and three here that's two and then three is over here on the other side of the gate you know it's just and the same with reverse and one it's just it's not very convenient but anyway there's reverse that park feature is kind of nice I'm not sure exactly what it does but I guess it's kind of like park on an automatic transmission some kind of parking pole that keeps the tractor from rolling rather than like an emergency brake or something you happy mm hmm are you happy yeah he's happy and he's got the zoomies what's that what's that buddy <laughs> That's on my sandwich? Nope, can't have it. It's mine. No, it's mine. Watch as you beg. You got your own food. You probably got your own goodies when you were in there and the sandwich was being made, if I know you. 
<laughs> All fine. Sit. Shake. Good boy. All right, here you go. Spoiled dog. Spoiled rotten. Here we are at electrical. So, unfortunately, well, or fortunately, the fuel solenoid shut off power problem is fixed. And the only thing I could think of, really the only thing I changed is I took everything apart, including the gauge cluster and the fuse block and everything, and I cleaned it because it was just packed full of junk and dirt and just everything you could possibly imagine, you know, 30 years worth of, worth of stuff. So, that's fixed. That's where we're at. But we still got the power drain when the battery's hooked up. So we gotta run through that real quick and figure out what that's doing. So, the easiest way to check this is, well, basically, you just take a ammeter and you hook it up, and as you can see, it's at the base, zero, one. So, and then you just hook it up in line in your circuit and you can see it's pulling, uh, it's still ticking up here, let's let it equalize. And one amp, I mean it's probably got a direct short somewhere, that's a pretty big power drain. It's still going up, I mean that's, that's a huge power drain. So anyway, so we've got to find that. So before I blow out my little test leads here, let's uh, disconnect that. So basically what I'm going to do is disconnect things until that goes away simple enough so let's do that well so apparently we've got more than one you can see i've got it hooked up so uh we've got half of the power drain so i got this plug over here this main engine plug so if i hook this up there you can see it elevates and if i pull it we drop back down again so that's half an amp or well more than that so that's part of the problem so we'll look at that we can trace that one back anyway we got the headlights unplugged but if i plug them in watch the meter as i plug that in well there's one power drain and the other one does the same thing so that's part of our problem. Let's keep digging through this and see if we can find some more. So after much work with a meter and running through these things, uh, pretty much everything on this tractor is causing a battery drain. Um, the alternator is causing a big drain. It's probably you know, grounding through the, I don't know, internals. It happens sometimes. The headlights are causing a drain. The gauge cluster is causing a drain. And at that point, I just stopped checking because it's kind of pointless when you got like, you know, a one amp plus draw on the thing. And yeah, so we'll see what the customer wants to do, but I recommend a battery cutoff switch. So we went over the electrical and I didn't really, I'm not gonna include it here cause it was just incredibly boring. And you know, most of my videos are incredibly boring already. So I don't need to actually, you know, bore more people to death. Net result is we got the lights working. I think all of the lights, we got all of the lights working and all of the electrical working as it should. Now there's still electrical drains. The alternator is, even though it's wired correctly and everything, it, it is still putting a power drain on the battery when it's hooked up. So you need to replace the alternator. It is working, it's putting out 14, 13, almost 14 volts. So it's working correctly when the engine's running. Um, it's just got that power drain probably through the coils when it's uh, just sitting there. Uh, gauge cluster, I think, is also creating power drain, if I remember correctly. I think we fixed the headlights because there was some shorts and things in the wiring and some wiring not hooked up and just kind of laying there and shorting the ground. Uh, that was part of getting the headlights working. Uh, there's a diode pack in there, which was also involved in getting the lights working for the gauge cluster and some other things. And I, I don't know, I think that has some issues too, but 
I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. The customer doesn't really want to replace those things because you can just disconnect the battery when you're not using it and it'd just be throwing more money at it. Um, if you want a really nice, absolutely perfect tractor, you could obviously go through and start, you know, shooting the parts shotgun at it and just throwing things to replace those things. But, you know, rebuilding the alternator to fix that problem isn't worth it. And uh, rebuilding the gauge cluster to fix that problem probably isn't worth it. Somewhere there's a short power drain inside there. Anyway, the lights, um, we do have them working. Turn signals. There's your turn signals. Uh, that one, the one's supposed to be on when the other one's blinking, apparently. It's a tractor thing. I don't know. My Belarus doesn't do that, but I guess some tractors do. Uh, the light switch, warning lights work, or your four ways. Uh, the work lights, we don't really, we have that work light, but it's busted. It doesn't work. Um, headlights. <sighs> Uh, headlights, apparently the four-ways are supposed to come on when the headlights are on, which I didn't know. Um, that's low beams, and this is high beams. High beams there. And, of course, the indicator does come on on the dash, and it's pretty bright out. I don't know if you can see it, but the high beam indicator does come on. Uh, but apparently the four-ways are supposed to be active when your headlights are active. I don't know, maybe that's a, and they've got that strobe wired in there on the top also along with the four ways, but apparently that's a tractor thing. I don't know, John Deere apparently does that. I double and triple checked the manual and this is the way it's supposed to be wired. I checked all the connections on the switch. So your four ways are supposed to be on when your headlights are on, I don't know. Apparently it's a thing. That That's the way it's supposed to be wired. Um, everything works. The Shifters work great, and uh, the rear hydraulics, everything, because uh, we did replace the fluids and filters and everything, so we double-checked all that, make sure that still works. Drives great, clutch feels fantastic, brakes work great. Um, all the engagement, like the PTO engagement levers, and all that works and feels as it should. Um, so, and the steering and everything, since we had all that apart, you know, double-check all that stuff, and. Uh, no leaks or anything, so I think we're good there, so uh, just final testing and take her for a spin here and drive her around a little bit and you know, then uh, then I think we can call this project complete after we've done our final checks on everything. There she is, I mean, other than being a John Deere, it's, it's a nice little tractor. Um, it's got uh, got 1,275 hours on it. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, these tractors, they have options as you can get. They have an option of a horn. There's some auxiliary electronics. There is uh, an auxiliary hydraulic kit you can get for this. It has hookups. Uh, well, back somewhere around there, I don't know. But if you want to run auxiliary hydraulics for your uh, tractor rear or front, if you have a loader or something, you can you can get a kit to do that. This doesn't have any of that fancy stuff on it, so. This is, I double checked the uh, tag and everything on this. This is, a, this is a 92 model. It's missing, there's some side panels here that cover up the battery box and everything that it's missing you know those just disappear because people don't want to mess with putting them back on because they're just a pain you know but they make it look a little nicer uh seat's a little ripped up but for the most part you know it's still there uh a seat belt on it and you know got your toolbox here which i stuck the wire for the fuel shut off that they had there back in because inevitably when it fails again, then you can run that wire and, you know. These things, I assume there's supposed to be a cover for the fuse panel here, probably part of the side panel. But, you know, the dirt and everything just got packed right in there. And I had to actually disassemble that and clean it out in order to get it to actually mostly function again. The lights, I forgot to mention, were mostly just ground problems. Uh, there was some split wires on the front here on the headlights and back here 
these things rely on the ground for the screws that hold them on. You can see I had to take it down to bare metal to get them to work. Um, but they're nice and working solid now. There's some loose wires back here because they've, you know, they probably had another work light on here at one time like that that somebody just added on and there's some wire splicing and things that they did. But those are the things you find on old tractors. Uh, so yeah, she should be ready to rock and roll now. She runs great and drives great and you know, you don't have to stick wires in various places to get her to fire up now, so that's a good thing. Filters and everything are changed. All the fluids have been changed. So, yeah, she's in pretty good shape and ready to rock and roll. Well, that'll do it for this tractor, and I'm not a big John Deere fan, so I hope I never see it again, because it's not mine as a customer's. Um, but we got her fixed up, and ready to go to work again which is what we do here and if you want to see more things like this other projects similar projects we do all kinds of things tractors cars whatever revivals just fixes all kinds of stuff if you want to see any of that feel free to subscribe like uh, hit that notification bell and then you'll know when these things come out and uh, we appreciate any any likes or subscriptions you can give us because it helps the channel and lets us know if we're doing a good job and uh, oh, Thanks for watching.